How much do you know about trains? This one, speeding along its steel rails, is carrying a load of people from many different points. To most of these people, the important thing is a comfortable journey. But how many of them do you suppose ever stop to think about the amazing machine which pulls their train so many miles, the steam engine? The story of how the steam engine works is a fascinating one. But to understand how steam can give such tremendous power to drive a locomotive, we must go back many years to the days when an Englishman named Newcomen invented the first successful steam pump. It looked something like this, and it worked by a very simple principle. Imagine a closed container with two valves like this. With the valves open, the container is now full of air. But if we let steam in through one of the valves, the steam will drive the air out, and soon the container will be full of steam. Now if we close both of the valves, and then cool the container, the steam will condense back into water. But we'd find that this water took up less space than the steam did. The space remaining contains nothing, neither air nor steam. It is, therefore, a vacuum. Meanwhile, the air outside the container exerts a pressure on the walls, which is not opposed by any pressure from within. If the walls were made of thinner material, this outside pressure would cause it to collapse. We call this air outside the container the atmosphere. Newcomen felt that the force exerted by the atmosphere in crushing the container could be made to do useful work. So he hit upon the idea of making the container into a cylinder and the top of the container a movable piston. Now, if the walls of the container are sturdy, the only thing the atmosphere could easily push was the piston. And the piston could be connected to a beam, and the other end of the beam to a pump rod. In practice, the engine worked like this. Steam supplied from a nearby boiler filled the cylinder. A jet of cold water injected into the cylinder condensed the steam and the pressure of it forced the piston down. The steam valve was opened again and the cycle repeated. Although this engine worked well and was used quite extensively, it had a great shortcoming. The cylinder had to be heated and then cooled to condense the steam each time the piston moved through one stroke. So much fuel was needed to reheat the cylinder each time that the engine was too expensive to run. The problem was solved by James Watt, an instrument maker from Scotland, who devised a means to eliminate the constant cooling and reheating of the same cylinder. His idea was to have a separate container in which the steam could be condensed so that there'd be no need to cool the cylinder. In the container on the left can be seen the condenser which was kept permanently cooled by being immersed in cold water. When the piston reached the top of its stroke, a valve was opened. This allowed the steam to escape into the condenser where it was cooled and condensed into water while the cylinder remained constantly hot. This arrangement proved much more efficient than the previous engine and needed much less fuel to run. Because of its effectiveness, the Watt engine soon was used for many other purposes than merely pumping. As demand for speedier transportation grew, the Watt engine was put on wheels and its pumping motion was used to turn the wheels. But gradually, a more compact engine was evolved, like George Stevenson's rocket. 
The rocket had a boiler, a cylinder, and a piston, just like Watt's engine. But a new principle was introduced here. Instead of using the pressure of the atmosphere to push the piston down, the force of steam was used to push it both up and down. Steam at a pressure many times greater than that of the atmosphere. At last, man had discovered the secret of the power of steam. And in the years that followed, the railway spread all over the face of the world, carrying with it the products of commerce and bringing mankind closer together. Newer and better locomotives made their appearance. Development was rapid, and now we have the modern streamlined locomotive, which travels smoothly across the country at high speeds and with perfect safety. But for all the refinement of the modern steam locomotive, it works in very much the same manner as the original rocket. Passing through the boiler from the firebox can be seen tubes through which flow the hot gases from the fire. These tubes heat the steam pipes which run through them. In this way, the steam is kept hot, and the pressure of the steam increases before it enters the cylinder. When the pressure of steam in the boiler is sufficiently high, the throttle valve is opened, and the steam rushes along this pipe. Through the superheater tubes, and down the feed pipe to the cylinder. Here, the pressure of steam forces the piston back, and the movement of the piston is transmitted to the driving wheels of the locomotive, through the piston rod and the connecting rod and shafts. The steam is now diverted to the other end of the cylinder and the pressure returns the piston to the beginning of its stroke. This is what happens, but in practice, it is a little more complicated than shown here. Above the cylinder is a valve sliding back and forth over two openings, or ports, in the side of the cylinder. This valve automatically diverts the steam, first to one, then to the other end of the cylinder, and is controlled by the valve gear working with the to and fro movement of the piston rod. This pipe feeds steam into the steam chest. These are the exhaust pipes through which the used steam escapes. Steam from the boiler is fed into the steam chest, and as the valve moves back and forth, the steam is allowed to pass into one or the other of the ports leading into the cylinder. In this position, the steam rushes into this end of the cylinder, forcing the piston back. The valve now moves to the other end of its stroke. Steam is diverted to this end of the cylinder, and the piston is driven in the opposite direction. Meanwhile, the used steam is pushed out through the exhaust port. And so the cycle is repeated again and again, so long as the pressure of steam is maintained. And that's the story of the steam engine.